Hello everyone. Welcome back. From this video onwards, we will be looking into the design and the detailing part of the MAD Foundation with SFA 2023. In this video, we will look into how we can create single or multiple design criteria. A design criteria is a set of parameters like permissible bar sizes or grades of concrete and steel that the program can use for designing one or more mats. When we assign multiple design criteria to one mat object, we are actually testing multiple scenarios for the design of the mat so that we can arrive at an efficient design. So let's begin with the actual workflow in the program. On the screen in this model, I have imported the stat model through the superstructure importing option in SF. After importing the model, I have created the mat foundation and also created the thickened regions below individual columns. Now I am currently at a stage where the mat has already been analyzed and is ready for concrete design. The first step towards designing is creation of design criteria. As already mentioned in previous video, design criteria is not predefined user must create it manually. For this example, we will select the ACI 318 2014 code, which is the FPS or English unit code for concrete design. Now here, we can create a single design criteria or multiple design criteria. This can be helpful when one is we want to check various design scenarios for a specific map or Another case could be there are multiple mat foundations in the model and each mat is to be designed for its own design criteria. So let us start creating the design criteria and defining various parameters. Firstly, we have the code parameters under which we need to define the value of strain relief. Now, as per the ACI code for the provided reinforcement, we have to check the strain in the bar that is farthest from the neutral axis on the tension side of the cross section. The strain in, the bar, in that bar must be greater than or equal to the value specified here for the tensile strain limit. The lowest value permissible as per the code is 0.004 as shown here. The neutral axis position and the strength reduction factor are calculated on the basis of actual strain in the extreme tension bar. Going ahead, we have the setting for cover where we can set different clear cover values for the top reinforcement, bottom reinforcement and the right face reinforcement. Next is the setting where we can set the minimum and maximum value of percentage of steel that is to be provided. Now here there are three values of PT which needs to be set. First is the minimum PT. The value that we enter here will be considered as the user defined limit of minimum PT. Whereas in addition to this value of minimum PT, the program also internally calculates the minimum PT as per the code mentioned criteria. The second is the nominal PT. This value of nominal PT will be used to determine the AST requirement in the areas where the bending moment is zero. In short, this is the minimum percentage of steel that needs to be provided in the compression or the stress-free areas. And just that in SFE 2023, it has been called as nominal PT. The third one is the temperature PT. If the mat foundation is analyzed for temperature loads and also if it is subjected to exposure conditions there which requires the design to be done for temperature variations, then we need to mention the PT under the temperature limit. Otherwise, the default value will be zero. Once we set the value of PT for all the three parameters in the program, the flexure design happens internally considering the PT from max of the PT minimum user defined value comma PT minimum as per the code guidelines, the PT nominal as defined 
or the PT temperature and final is the PT required for the flexure design. So there are five different AST requirement or the PT requirement that are being calculated internally and the final AST requirement that is determined is the max out of all these five values. Next, we jump forward to the design settings to be made for the one way shear check. By default, the option to perform the one way shear check is set as false. So, if we want to perform the one way shear check, we need to set the option to true. Unlike a beam, a mat foundation is continuous on both the sides of the column. Thus, the width of the section to be used in computing the demand or the capacity in one way shear is not readily known. In order for the program to use a well defined value of the width, we need to specify a value for the term denoted as factor. For details of the procedure that is being used to calculate the width from this factor term, you can go through the video. Uh, whose link is provided in the description below. The effective width that is shown in the yellow line will be the width that will be considered while performing one way shear check along the global x axis. Similarly, the one shown in the blue line will be the width that will be considered while performing the one way shear check along the global z direction. The next parameter to be set under one way shear check is the method by which the shear stress is determined. Now to determine this value, the input of a term called calculation point spacing is to be provided to the program by the user. Now for understanding the methods, what is the difference between the methods by which the shear stress is determined? You can go through the video whose link has been provided in the description below. Next, we have the setting for punching shear check. The default setting for performing the check is true, but however, the flexibility to switch off or not perform this check is available if we select the option as false. The remaining setting to be made for punching shear check is we need to decide whether we want to consider the shear generated from the unbalanced venting moment in addition to the actual shear from the column itself. Based on this setting, the total shear force value for performing the punching shear check will be determined. This completes the setting which are related to design criteria. Next, we will go through the concrete and rebar settings, which is this last step towards finalizing the design and the basis of detailing. Under these settings, we need to select the concrete and the steel grade which we want to use in the design and also select the list of rebar which will play a role in the bar select. For selecting the concrete grade, there are two options. First is the use assigned concrete. So with this option, the program designs the mat using the concrete grade that was assigned to mat at the time of analysis. And the second option, which is used from available. With this option, the program allows us to select the concrete grade that we selected while space specifying the material list. Now, the next step is to select the steel grade for designing. Here, we need to select the desired steel or the reinforcement grade from the defined list, and that will be used in the program for designing. We also need to select the list of diameters that we want to use for main reinforcement design as well as for the shear syrup design. We should select a bar diameter list from which the program will identify the optimum bar size for designing each face and each direction of the slab surfaces. The diameter list is separately available for the metric units and the English FPS units. With this, we conclude this video which covered defining the design criteria and the parameters that we can set within the design criteria. Thank you.